So wearables are all the rage at a conference I spoke at this morning, and they said uh, 2014 is the year of wearables. I'd sort of argue with that because I don't think wearables are going to go mainstream this year. But, well, it depends on what Apple's going to do. <laughs> but uh, here we have Smart Monitor, which is taking a wearable watch from uh, MetaWatch and, uh, and using the sensors inside to study epileptic seizures and do all sorts of interesting things to change the lives of those patients. And we're going to hear about it right now. I'm Anu Nathan, CEO of Smart Monitor, and Smart Monitor is a three-year-old company, and um, this is my third startup. The first startup was acquired very successfully back in 1999, and uh, my second company that I co-founded is in the video analytics space. A little bit about the genesis of Smart Monitor, how we came into being. As part of the video analytics company, we, uh, our customers were the government and large enterprise customers like Motorola and Disney. And as part of that, we would uh, constantly or continuously hear about people asking, if you can protect an area from intrusion, can you put a camera in my elderly mom's room, let me know if she's falling, or in my son's room, and let me know if he's having a seizure. So that was a constant refrain that we kept hearing, and that's what got us started off into the healthcare segment, yeah. um, using sensors, different types of sensors, wearable or otherwise, to, uh, to manage chronic health conditions. Yeah. Well, I, I recognized the watch right away because this was one of the first smart watches I'd seen. Yes. Uh, Bill Geyser, who mm -hmm. used to work for Fossil, mm -hmm. uh, brought me some prototypes that looked very similar to this and had a, a, one of these highly reflective screens. Right. Because uh, it's, it's uh, a unique screen. It's a, a silver screen. But yes. tell me how you worked with him. Uh, tell me how this came to be. Definitely. So, you know, the first um, the thing we did was to look at video in detecting seizures. Now, you know, we got all these, all this feedback from the market or inquiries from the market. So we got started looking into using video to alert upon certain types of um, uh, emergent conditions. And uh, we took the concept to Stanford. We got some videos of people having seizures and very quickly realized video has its limitations. You have to be within the field of view of the camera to, uh, for the camera to do any meaningful uh, processing. And um, also, it's very hard to discern the convulsions under the sheets at night. So there were a lot of uh, limitations with the video-based approach. So we yeah. went into a wearable um, approach and something that people who have chronic conditions, at the end of the day, they need to um, continue to have as normal a life as possible. So the, um, the goal to make the product w uh, portable and uh, you know, always on was very, very strong. And so we went into having a wrist-worn device because for the specific vertical that we were addressing, people prone to epilepsy and seizure-related disorders, yeah. the movements were manifested most in the extremities, in the uh, wrists and sometimes in the ankles as well. So that's what got us on to um, developing a wrist sensor-based approach. And uh, three, four years ago, when we first came out, we made our own smartwatch. In fact, we have, uh, we have a trademark on the word smartwatch because there weren't any other smartwatches at that time. And since then, uh, of course, there has been this whole explosion with smartwatches. So uh, we made our own prototype and uh, you know we pro made sure that it uh, it would fulfill the functions that we expected of the product. And then there was, uh, you know, the smartwatch revolution pretty much started, and this was one yeah. of the first platforms that came in. We like the fact that it is slimmer than most, than most of the other watches today. It has a nice big display screen, as you mentioned. Yeah. We use that to send out a lot of messages. In fact, um, our users, we have medication reminders that can be programmed, and let's say your 11 o'clock, 
you know, pill is due, and then at 11, the watch will vibrate gently, the name of the medication will blink on the screen, and then the users can acknowledge it saying, yes, I got it, or they can cancel it. So, yeah. well, you know, this platform really lent itself to what we wanted to do. It allowed us to put our algorithms on board, it had some storage on board, it, had, it talked to the outside world using Bluetooth, which was great, low energy. Yeah. And so that's really what got us started on this platform. It was, uh, it lent itself to all the specifications and to the vision that we had for the product. Well, Bill's, uh, he uses a really, really reflective screen. It's not an LED screen. Right. And so it doesn't use very much power. Exactly. And uh, off camera, you were telling me that this is one of the few watches that actually uh, kept a constant uh, connection to a smartphone. Right? That is correct. Well, I mean, uh, the watch itself does not do it. We put our own uh, secret sauce into it, the algorithms, the firmware, and we have engineered it the way, um, uh, the way we want it to work for our vertical, for yeah. people with uh, the chronic seizure-related disorders. Yeah. Why pick that vertical? Why, you know, because I, I don't imagine there's that many people in the world who are having seizures, but... Yes, surprisingly, um, uh, you know, it, th there are more people than you would think. We'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. Now, uh, with uh, the, the reason we picked seizure-related disorders and epilepsy is um, there is a very, epilepsy manifests itself in acute episodes every yeah. so often. I, um, the, the analogy that I like to use is living in an earthquake zone and let's say your house is on a fault line and you don't know when that earthquake is going to happen. You don't know how bad it's going to be. Yeah. You just know that it will happen sometime, someday. And in fact, with seizures, it happens more often than that. So it manifests itself in these acute episodes that is loss of consciousness on part of the individual. There's loss of awareness, loss of control of bodily functions. So essentially, the person who's seizing needs assistance, but they are not in any condition to summon that assistance. Yeah. So that is really uh, the, the need that we uh, that struck a chord with us because there is this dire need where the safety of the individual is 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 at risk, and so that's really what got us to um, choose that specific vertical. Now, just some numbers about epilepsy. About um, one to two percent of the population has epilepsy, and again, we have uh, the, the latest research shows that about four percent of the population will be prone to epilepsy during their lifetime. So those numbers are pretty high. That translates to over 10 million people in the U.S. alone. Wow. And in the developed world, um, that is about over 50 million people. And again, worldwide, it's over 100 million. So it is, uh, it is an underserved condition. And um, so that's really, the, and the annual market spend is over $18 billion in the U.S. alone, just on epilepsy. There, now it's picked up the convulsions. It says abnormal motion on the screen. And then the watch vibrates gently. And even before the stop there, you're getting a text message on my phone, on my iPhone. It says abnormal motion. It gives you the date and the time. And it also gives you the GPS location, a link to maps. You click on that, it'll take you to the maps application and tell you exactly where the person who want, needs the assistance is. Cool. How much does this cost to buy? Uh, so we have a very affordable subscription-based model. We have a $150 to $200 one-time cost uh, for the device activation. And then there is an ongoing monthly subscription of about $19 to $29, depending on the level of product they choose. So how does it sense on, uh, somebody's having seizure that's wearing this? So, uh, you know, this is a very simple device. It's very ubiquitous. It does not advertise a medical condition. It does not beep, buzz, flash red lights, or do anything like that. It's just an ordinary wristwatch. It looks like that, and it functions as a wristwatch. It tells the date, the time, and a whole bunch of things in addition to that. Now, we have our algorithms running inside this, so we are looking for patterns of repetitive shaking motion that are very indicative of the types of convulsive seizures where the user need, where the wearer needs assistance. And uh, when we detect those type of movements, then we immediately notify, the watch immediately notifies a companion smartphone, an Android phone today, an iPhone later this year, and it will immediately notify that phone saying there is an alertable event, the date and the time, and then the phone jumps up, the, the 
tethered phone jumps up and takes care of alerting the designated recipients. You can specify up to 10 people to get those SMS text messages and phone calls as alerts. Now, uh, the uh, text messages also have the GPS location, so family members and loved ones know where the person who is actually um, having the seizure is. And we have some amazing, amazing um, uh, testimonials uh, mostly unsolicited from our user base, where this has been a game changer, completely changed their lives, the incredible peace of mind, and uh, the enhancement and the quality of life um, that this device has brought about. Uh, you tested this with Stanford at Stanford, right? Yes, yes. Um, uh, so, you know, again, this is a very um, uh, ubiquitous. Uh, accelerometer sensor, so we have our algorithms on it, and uh, we the in, we essentially uh, help the algorithms learn the patterns of seizures, and then we also taught the algorithms what were not seizures. You know, I'm gesturing, I'm talking. It will not alert on any of those. So, um, having engineered it that way, we needed to clinically validate it because this is for a pretty serious. Um, a, a type of situation where we want to make sure that we are catching the true um, alert. So we tested it with Stanford with adult patients where uh, this performed extremely well and uh, immediately alerted. It was um, compared against the video EEG. You'll just have to shake it for a few seconds. Did it? Yeah, I, I didn't even shake it. So you have to shake it in a very specific pattern? No, you, you just have to shake it repetitively for about, you know, right now we've set it to about seven seconds because we don't want it to keep alerting on, um, yeah. uh, you know, any light motion. So, uh, and very quickly it'll buzz and um, it'll say abnormal motion. Yeah. There you there go. go. Yep. And it's, it's uh, a. Yep. And you have the ability to cancel it. If you inadvertently set it off for whatever reason, you would push the middle button and it would cancel the alert. The, this is the family member's phone. They've already gotten a text message saying that um, the person is having a seizure and uh, this is where they are on Folsom Street. So all of that goes through in seconds. So we uh, clearly validated this clinically with uh, both the adult population and the pediatric population. Yeah. Adult population, the, the studies, the clinical studies at Stanford concluded about uh, two and a half years ago, and we did extremely well in the medical community. It's very high sensitivity, which means the accuracy with which we catch the true positives. And uh, then we also validated it with children um, in uh, with UCSF with the pediatric population we did not miss a single seizure and uh, we had one false positive during the for the entire duration of the studies with children which is remarkable because with children you would expect more of these types of un, uh, you know unexpected movements but uh, we did extremely well with that interesting are you are you looking for more sensors on phone on uh, devices like this? Like uh, the basis has heart rate sensor and perspiration sensor. Right. Those probably can t potentially help do uh, different kinds of sensing of this kind of problem. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're dead on because uh, that's really where we are going. There is uh, there are the, there is this multi-sensory approach, and we are looking at incorporating other sensors as well because it helps us expand into other verticals and also serve this vertical in a much more effective fashion. And the thing is, um, with wearables like this, we are already selling internationally. We have um, a distribution partnerships in Australia, in the UK, in Ireland, in the rest of Europe. So, uh, you know, and it's doing extremely well in those places as well. Um, you know, so incorporating additional sensors uh, will only help us uh, serve this market better. And Ed, I'm going to just silence this for a little bit because yeah. um, uh, it will, will help us serve the market much, much better. And uh, that, that's really where we are going with this. Yeah. And today, um, because this is for a specific need, we are looking for these patterns of seizures. We uh, finished our clinical validations at Stanford and at UCSF, and uh, we brought the product to market last year. Initially, we brought when we brought it to market, just logistics, easy to get to market. It was a one-time pricing, which um, made it difficult uh, for many people to afford the product. So then, late last year, we transitioned to a subscription-based pricing model, which is working extremely well with the uh, population that we serve. Um, uh, so, you know, and we are constantly looking at uh, innovating 
And uh, when we first brought today, we are selling it as a non-medical device because that was the uh, quickest way to get it to the market. Yeah. And um, as we speak, we are preparing our submissions to the FDA for a 510K clearance. We will be making specific claims and it will be sold as a medical device. And with that approach, what we expect mm. to do is um, uh, leverage the, the hospitals, the epilepsy centers, the medical community even better. Today, we are selling it direct to consumer. And um, as once we get the FDA clearance, we are going to be pursuing reimbursement, insurance reimbursement for the product um, with CMS and with other private payers as well. Yeah. So it'll open up those it, pathways. I, uh, you know, it's one thing if you have a seizure at home and you need your uh, parents to know or you need, uh, you need your doctor to know. It's another thing if you have a seizure out in public. Th does it help uh, people understand around what's going on? Because uh, I've had, I've had a, uh, I used to run a camera store and uh, a lady had an epileptic seizure. Really? I had no idea what to do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Other than call 911, you know? Right, hey, right. Somebody having a seizure. I know, I know. And that's typically what uh, everyone tells us when you have a seizure in a public place that are, uh, you know, the first thing that happens is you call 911. Let me give you, uh, you know, a story which um, one of our customers told us. A 22-year-old girl, she goes um, to the mall with her friend and um, she, you know, her mom would not allow her to go by herself with her friends before because she was just paranoid. She would have seizures very frequently and she was just concerned. Now, once they got our product, um, they felt much, much more comfortable doing that. So she goes to the mall with her boyfriend and then uh, she, she um, has to go into the restroom and in the restroom, she has a seizure. And the alert goes immediately to the mom uh, the text message goes and then the phone call goes and the mom's able to call her friend and say she's seizing inside the restroom and from the ambient noise she's able to understand that she was in the restroom. She calls the friend immediately, tells him you have to go get help, make sure she's helped and he does that and then uh, within uh, two or three minutes uh, there is some standard procedure that people who know how to deal with seizures follow. It is providing rescue medication, making sure the person is safe, and there are a series of intervention measures that are uh, prescribed by doctors. And he was able to do what was needed and then reassure everyone around there is no need to call 911. And uh, she Which saves you know, $1,500. Absolutely, you know, and that's exactly the point. And then, you know, Without some, uh, without some solution like this, the first thing people do is to call 911. And then you go, there is an ambulance ride to the hospital and to the ER. And then once you get to the ER, hopefully the seizure has subsided. But then at the end of the day, you have at least a $2,500 bill for the whole process, completely unnecessary. Because this, uh, you know, in most situations, uh, seizures, if, you, if the you know, prescribed intervention measures are followed through and carried out, most, most times there is no need for a hospital visit. Yeah. Where does this go uh, from here? Uh, well, how, first of all, how are you funded and how many people work on this? So we have about uh, 15 people working on it at this time. We have um, offices overseas as well. In addition, here what we do is architecture primarily and uh, product sales fulfillment, order fulfillment, sales and uh, marketing or development, the app development, the firmware development is all done overseas in Asia and uh, in Europe as well. That helps us keep, keep our costs low. So we have about a quarter million dollars in um, grant funding from epilepsy research organizations and some debt financing. I'm just about to close a, a small angel round of funding as well. So that is looking very, very promising. It looks like we'll go over the amount that we originally anticipated to close. Very cool. So, you know, the, the, the next step for us is we want to provide iPhone compatibility. Today we have Android. And then we are looking at additional form factors and we are looking at getting this FDA cleared. So that will open up some reimbursement pathways. Um, and that is for the epilepsy market. And down the road, we are really uh, looking at other adjacent markets, such as Parkinson's um, and uh, other movement-related disorders as well. And we have a really, really active uh, product plan in the pipeline. Very and cool. really excited about where we can go with this. We believe this is just the start for us. And with multiple sensors, um, we are we just have some uh, a really really exciting roadmap. 
No, it's uh, really interesting. I, you know, I never thought of building a business off, off of this uh, use case. Uh, where do we learn more about it? Uh, there is a lot of information available on our website. We have a page for clinicians that tells Give doctors. Me the website. <laughs> it is uh, www.smart, S-M-A-R-T, dash monitor, M-O-N-I-T-O-R, dot com. Yep. We have a lot of amazing testimonials from our users as well, so there's a lot of information on the website. Very cool. Thank you so much Wonderful. for coming and showing this. Thank you so much.